Hi boys and girls, it's Monday afternoon and I'm here to continue uh, with chapter 7 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. We were finishing up. If you remember in the last chapter, we had Alice going to a table that was set under a tree in front of a house and the March Hare and the Mad Hatter were having a tea and the Dormouse was sleeping under the table. And I remember reading to you about how Alice and the Mad Hatter had a few little words with each other. He was making comments about her hair and they were kind of going back and forth. And then he posed a silly riddle to her. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Kind of didn't make any sense, but then they started exchanging all different kinds of riddles with each other. And I showed you a picture of them sitting at the table together. And there's the three of them. And little mouse is in the picture as well. And so after that, they started talking about a watch and about time. And they were mentioning that the watch was very different. And most of you probably would have noticed that the watch showed the day but didn't show the hour. And the Mad Hatter told her it's a good thing because I could keep it at 1.30 every day, which is meal time, and just keep that time for myself. And Alice, well, he said she could do that. And Alice said, well, is that what you do? And he told her no, because something happened between him and the queen. And that's what we were up to. Um, apparently, they were singing songs, and the queen wasn't happy with the song that that he was singing. He didn't even get to finish his verse when the queen said, he's killing the time off with his head. And now I'll continue. How dreadfully savage, exclaimed Alice. And ever since that, the hatter went on in a mournful tone. He won't do a thing, I ask. It's always six o'clock now. A bright idea came into Alice's head. Is that the reason so many tea things are put out here? Yes, that's it, said the hatter with a sigh. Now it's always tea time, and we've no time to wash things between. So then you keep moving around, I suppose? Exactly so, said the hatter. As things get moved up, we change seats. But what happens when you come to the beginning again, Alice asked. Suppose we change the subject, the March Hare interrupted, yawning. I'm getting tired of this. I vote the young lady tells us a story now. I'm afraid I don't know one, said Alice, rather alarmed at the proposal. Then the Dormouse shall, they both cried. Wake up, Dormouse, and they pinched it on both sides at once. The Dormouse slowly opened its eyes. I wasn't asleep, it said in a hoarse, feeble voice. I heard every word you fellows were saying. Tell us a story, said the March Hare. Yes, please do, asked Alice. And be quick about it, said the Hatter, or you'll be asleep again before it's done. Once upon a time, there were three little sisters. The Dormouse began in a great hurry, and their names were Elsie, Lacey, and Tilly, and they lived at the bottom of a well. What did they live on, said Alice, who always took a great interest in questions of eating and drinking. They lived on treacle. Treacle, by the way, boys and girls, is a kind of molasses, syrup, sugary, that was used long ago. They lived on treacle, said the Dormouse, after thinking a minute or two. They couldn't have done that, you know, Alice gently remarked. They'd have been ill. So they were, said the mouse, very ill. Alice tried a little to fancy herself on such an extraordinary way of living would be like, but it puzzled her too much, so she went on. But why did they live at the bottom of a well? Take some more tea, the March Hare said to Alice very earnestly. I've had nothing yet, Alice replied in an offended tone, so I can't take more if I haven't had any. You mean you can't take less, said the Hatter. It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion, said Alice. Who's making personal remarks now, the Hatter asked triumphantly. Alice did not quite know what to say to this. So she helped herself to some tea and bread and butter and then turned to the Dormouse and repeated her question. 
Why did they live at the bottom of a well? The Dormouse again took a minute or two to think about it and then said, it was a treacle well. There's no such thing, Alice was beginning very angrily, but the Hatter and the March Hare went on, shh, shh, and the Dormouse suckily remarked, if you can't be civil, you'd better finish the story yourself. No, please go on, Alice said very humbly. I won't interrupt you again. I dare say there may be one. One indeed, said the Dormouse indignantly. However, he consented to go on. And so these three little sisters, they were learning to draw, you know. What did they draw, said Alice, quite forgetting her promise. Treacle, said the Dormouse, without considering at all this time. I want a clean cup, interrupted the Hatter. Let's all move one place on. He moved on as he spoke, and the Dormouse followed him. The March Hare moved into the Dormouse's place, and Alice rather unwillingly took the place of the March Hare. The Hatter was the only one who got any advantage from the change, and Alice was a good deal worse off than before, as the March Hare had just upset the milk jug into his plate. Alice did not wish to offend the Dormouse again, so she began very cautiously. But I don't understand. Where did they draw the treacle from? You can draw water out of a water well, said the Hatter. So I should think you can draw treacle out of a treacle well. Eh. Uh, but they were in the well, Alice said to the Dormouse, not choosing to notice his last remark. Of course they were, said the Dormouse, well in. This answer so confused poor Alice that she let the Dormouse go on for some time without interrupting it further. They were learning to draw, the Dormouse went on, yawning and rubbing its eyes, for it was getting very sleepy, and they drew all manner of things, everything that begins with an M. Why with an M, said Alice. Why not, said the March Hare. Alice was silent. The Dormouse had closed its eyes by this time and was going off in a doze. But on being pinched by the Hatter, it woke up again with a little shriek and went on. That begins with an M, such as mousetraps and the moon and memory and muchness. You know, you say things are much of a muchness. Did you ever see such a thing as a drawing of a muchness? Really, now you ask me, said Alice, very much confused. I don't think... Then you shouldn't talk, said the Hatter. This piece of rudeness was more than Alice could bear. She got up in great disgust and walked off. The Dormouse fell asleep instantly, and neither of the others took the least notice of her going, though she looked back once or twice, half hoping that they would call after her. The last time she saw them, they were trying to put the Dormouse into the teapot. Here's a picture of them trying to shove the Dormouse who was trying to read a, tell a story to them into the teapot. At any rate, I'll never go there again, said Alice as she picked her way through the wood. It's the stupidest tea party I ever was at in all my life. Just as she said this, she noticed that one of the trees had a door leading right into it. That's very curious, she thought, but everything's curious today. I think I may as well go in at once. And in she went. Once more she found herself in the long hall and close to the little glass table. Now I'll manage better this time, she said to herself, and began by taking the little golden key and unlocking the door that led into the garden. Then she set to work nibbling at the mushroom. She had kept a piece of it in her pocket till she was about a foot high, 12 inches. Then she walked down the little passage and then she found herself at last in the beautiful garden among the bright flower beds and the cool fountains. That ends chapter seven. And this is the question I'd like you to think of. And I'll type it up and print it on Edmodo for you. Why did Alice, well, first of all, why do the characters at the tea party move around the table so much? Why do the characters move around the table so much? Next question, why did Alice find it difficult? Oh no, actually, I'm sorry, boys and girls. The only question you have for chapter seven would be, why do the characters at the, mad tea, at the tea party move around the table so much? The other questions for chapter eight. 
So you had three questions in this chapter. Which characters do we first meet at the Mad Hatter's house? What was wrong with the Mad Hatter's watch? And why do the characters at the tea party move around the table so much? And I really would like you to answer these questions for me on a sheet of paper and um, take a picture of it for me. If you're not sure, go back and listen to the story. Both recordings will be there for you. I'm posting this one now. And I hope you enjoyed the story, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day.